afternoon. This is Dorothea, Air Post Creations 2021. I hope you all had a nice Saturday so far. And today I like to talk a little bit more about Tibetan Buddhism, about the uh, symbolism in the prayer flags, the different colors they use in the symbolism and things like that. Okay, so let's start. The term Lamaism comes from the name given to the monks because Tibet's monks are called Lamas, meaning superior ones. This term is incorrectly called the uh, uh, it's incorrectly called Lamaism because it is influenced by a branch of tantric or esoteric Buddhism of the Indian Varana. Tibetan Buddhism is also called Indo-Tibetan Buddhism, Himalayan Buddhism, and Northern Buddhism. This so-called Lamaism is found in Tibet and Mongolia, and it is partly religious and partly political since China had an influence on it. Tibet was invaded by the Chinese government in 1950. China back then claimed that Tibet needed a peaceful liberation. Of course, that wasn't true, and the so-called peaceful liberation wasn't peaceful, but rather violent and brutal. Because the Dalai Lama is from Tibet, he was born there on July the 6th, 1935. When China invaded Tibet in 1950, the Dalai Lama decided to finally flee to India in 1959. It was no longer safe for him to stay in his home country, so he went to India where he got safe shelter or exile, and that's what he did. Okay, the Dalai Lama belongs to the Gelupka tradition of Tibetan Buddhism, the largest and most influential tradition in Tibet. Tibetans believe that the Dalai Lama has control over his rebirth and that he can choose the body in which he will be reincarnated. The Dalai Lama is the number 14 in the succession and is considered a living Buddha of compassion. He is a reincarnation of Bodhisattva Chenretsik who renounced Nirvana in order to help mankind. Tibet is a remote country about twice the size of Texas in the United States and Tibet sits veiled or covered behind the Himalayan mountains. The Buddhism in Tibet has a very own art and this art depicts different Buddhas and historical stories. This art is very different from the oil paintings and frescoes in holy places painted by Michelangelo and Da Vinci, depicting the religion of Christianity. Tibetan art shows Buddhas on glass, silk, brocade and paper, as well as in architecture and sculptures. Many different Buddha deities are depicted with things like skull cups, swords dripping of blood, a Buddha riding on a mule through a pool of blood, or fearful faces surrounded by flames of fire behind their heads. So, one might be tempted to ask, why is Tibetan art showing Buddhist deities in such a way? It will at first not very well go together 
with Buddhist teachings of non-violence, right? But such wrathful or fierce or forceful deities are so depicted because they need all the powers to destroy all obstacles on the way to enlightenment. These types of deities first appeared in India during the late 6th century and became a part of the Indian Tantric Buddhism by the late 10th and early 11th century. Such fierce deities are found both in the male and female Buddhists. The so-called Herukas, for instance, are blood drinkers. They are enlightened masculine beings who are fierce and drinking blood to express their detachment from the world of ignorance. Does Buddhism have a symbol? Well, yes, Buddhist tradition has actually eight symbols and they are a white parasol, a conch shell, a treasury vase, a victory banner, a dharma wheel, a pair of golden fish, a knot that is endless, and a lotus flower. Mandalas are important in Buddhist art and tradition. The first mandalas appeared around the first century BCE and spread throughout Asia when Buddhist monks traveled the Silk Road. Mandalas, a creation of Buddhism, are not only found in Tibet, but also in India, Nepal, China, Japan, Bhutan, and Indonesia, dating from as early as the time monks traveled the Silk Road. Now mandalas are created worldwide, including New York City. Mandalas are used for meditation and mandala means circle in Sanskrit. A mandala's color is divided or arranged in five different colors. There is white for openness, red for vitality and strength, yellow for humility, blue for life's purity and infinity, and black for the darkness. Tibetan Buddhism is found in Tibet, Nepal, Mongolia, Bhutan, parts of Russia, like in Siberia, and northern India. Tibetan Buddhism has spread outside of Asia because of the Tibetan diaspora from 1959 onwards, onwards when Dalai Lama left for India. With the Dalai Lama escaping to India, the Indian subcontinent has also enjoyed a renaissance of Tibetan Buddhism in India. Tibetan Buddhism has four major schools and the native Tibetan term for Buddhism is the Dharma of the insiders and the Buddha Dharma of the insiders seeks the truth not outside of himself but inside in his own nature of his mind. Westerners unfamiliar with Tibetan Buddhism initially, initially turned to China to understand it better. The Han Buddhism in China used the term Lamaism which literally means doctrine of the Lamas. This was of course very confusing to Western scholars 
and even a scholar like the German philosopher Kegel took over the term Lamaism because he didn't know any better, so he used it as early as 1822 in his writings. Now the term has been discredited and changed to Tibetan, Tibetan Buddhism or Indo-Tibetan Buddhism. The middle way of Indian Buddhism is the dominant Buddhist philosophy today in Tibet. Monastic curriculum in all four major schools study Buddhist Indian texts. The major Buddhist texts are taught in classical Tibetan language, but it is also translated in other languages such as Mongolian and Manchu. Western academics and Buddhist practitioners have translated many into Western languages as well. The most important works of the six great Indian Mahayana authors are studied by Tibetan Buddhists. Tibetan Buddhism uses colors to represent one, a state of mind, two, a celestial Buddha, three, a body part, and four, a part of the mantraham or a natural element. The color blue means purity and healing and, and, is, uh, and the ear and the element air are associated with the color blue. When you meditate on this color, anger can be transformed into wisdom. The color white means learning and knowledge, and the eyes and element water are associated with the color white. White in meditation cuts through delusion of ignorance and turns it into wisdom of reality. The color red means life force and preservation, and the tongue and the element fire are associated with the color red. When you meditate on red, the delusions of a the delusions of attachment are transformed into wisdom of discernment. The color green means balance and harmony, and the head and nature are associated with the color green. When you meditate on green, jealousy is transformed into accomplishment. The color yellow means rootedness and renunciation, and the nose and the earth are associated with the color yellow. When you meditate on yellow, pride is transformed into wisdom of sameness. These five pure lights, as they are called pure lights, are seen in mandalas and Tibetan Buddhism and in their prayer flags. Each of the five colors are associated with a particular Buddha or Bodhisattva. So when meditating on a particular color, spiritual transformation can be achieved. Colorful prayer flags can be seen in Tibet, in China, in Nepal, in Bhutan, in Kashmir. They have inscribed mantras and they are often seen hanging from mountain tops, branches of trees, bridges, and so forth. Prayer flags, they are symbolic for good fortune, for peace, for sympathy, and for wisdom. And such prayer flags cannot be arranged anyway 
one feels like it, but must follow a fixed order. On top is always blue, symbolizing the blue sky. Next comes white for symbolizing white clouds. Next comes the color red and it is the color of a flame. Next color is green. Here green symbolizes a green river and at the bottom comes the color yellow symbolizing the earth. Now we come to the 10 most important Buddhas and deities of Tibetan Buddhism. Let me take a sip. I made another choose. What is in there? I forgot. Wait a moment. Carrots, a salad, an ice, iceberg salad, carrots, an orange, a lime. That was pretty much it. getting thirsty from talking so much. So now we come to the deities, the 10 most important in Buddhism, in the Tibetan uh, Buddhism, okay? Shown, sh shown through the means of art by the paintings on silk or brocade, paper and so forth. Number one, there is Buddha Shakyamuni, also called the historical Buddha. His hair is blue and the head is surrounded by the aura of enlightenment. He meditates and holds a begging bowl in his left hand. The right hand touches the ground, which means calling the earth to witness. Number two is Buddha Maitreya, called the future Buddha. In Buddhism, there are five earthly Buddhas, each associated with one of the five ages, called Kala. Buddha Shakyamuni is the earthly Buddha of the first and present age. Buddha Maitreya is the final earthly Buddha and he functions as the great teacher of mankind expected to lead humanity back to Buddhism. Maitreya sits in European posture, meaning both feet on the ground so he can quickly stand up and rise, a symbol of what is to come. He usually wears a crown entwined with flowers. The associated mudra, meaning hand gesture, is the Dharma Chakra standing for the turning of the wheel of knowledge and the wheel is also a symbol of teaching. Number three is Avalokiteshvara or Bodhisattva of compassion. Dalai Lama is regarded as a manifestation of Avalokiteshvara, the patron saint of Tibet standing for compassion. But his vatvas are enlightened beings who out of compassion don't go into nirvana but instead stay back to help others to help others to find salvation. There are 108 different manifestations of Avalokiteshvara. 108 is a sacred number in Tibetan Buddhism. The Bodhisattvas, the Bodhisattva relating to the manifestation of Dalai Lama, has 11 heads and 1,000 arms. On each of the palms of the 100 hands, you can see the eye of 
compassion. Number four is Manyushri or Bodhisattva of wisdom and literature. He holds great significance for scholars and students who call and pray to him, requesting knowledge and memory. Manyushri holds a sword, the symbol of wisdom, to cut the ties of ignorance. He also has a book by his side resting on a lotus flower. Number five is Mahakala, also called the Guardian. Mahakala is among the Dharmapalas or defenders of the doctrine. These are actually ghosts, demons and deities belonging to the Tibetan tradition, which over time have been converted or adapted to Buddhism. They are easily recognized by their wrathful presentation. Mahakula is related in the meaning to the deity Shiva of Hinduism. Mahakula is usually standing up holding a skull cap, a skull cup, a cup full of skulls, in the front left hand and in his right hand a cleaver to cut through all negative materialistic attitudes. In the two back hands he carries a tricorn and a goat. He wears a tiger skin and a belt made of skulls and stands on the two outstretched smaller versions of himself. Mahakula has three eyes and carries a five skull crown that represents the transformation of the mental poisons of hatred, greed, pride, envy and ignorance. These gruesome attributes symbolize his tireless determination to redeem himself. So, I think for today that's okay to finish it now because I thought Tomorrow I make another video to finish the whole thing up, okay? This is today, was just to introduce the first, uh, how many numbers did we have? The first five of the deities. So tomorrow are five more coming to finish up. The deities with the blood and the skulls and all that stuff, okay? We do that tomorrow. And... Also tomorrow I will uh, decide to, uh, to finish up on Tibetan Buddhism so we can learn other things, maybe a bit more. On Monday I think I will do that. Zen Buddhism. Zen Buddhism is very interesting and is much followed in the modern times also here in Europe. Zen Buddhism seems to appeal to the modern people because it's very, let's see, well, the whole Zen Buddhism is pretty modern because they have lots of meditation, they have also healthy living, stressless living and things like that. So it's appeared, it, it appears to the modern times and is a very interesting philosophy. So on Monday I thought I like to introduce Zen Buddhism in my channel, okay? But tomorrow on Sunday I will finish up with the five other deities in the art. So we can finish that up tomorrow and on Monday we start something different, okay? So, excuse, excuse me for the day for stuttering around. I don't know what's wrong with me. I hope tomorrow will be better.
Let me have another sip. I think it's my fault that I always run late and then I get kind of nervous and then I do stupid stuff. So please excuse, okay? Tomorrow I hope I will do it much better and I promise, yes, it will be better tomorrow, okay? So you all have a wonderful day, the rest of the Saturday and thank you very much for watching my channel if you do watch it i love you all and i hope you all are well and goodbye till tomorrow then